I don't want to fly out in the desert right now on night vision goggles, shoot this gun at a tank, fly back, debrief the event, then clean this gun. What's up everyone, Jeff Jorgensen here. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the seven things that I wish I knew before I joined the military. Number one, you probably won't ever see combat. Everyone joins the military for different reasons. Some join to travel the world, some join to learn a trade to use outside of the military, and some join to see combat. As the saying goes in the military, 1% of the US population will ever serve in the military. Of that 1%, only 1% will serve in a combat role, and of those 1%, only 10% will ever see combat. This does not make you less of a man or woman, or worth, not worth joining the US military. While serving in combat is very admirable and for, peop and for the people that do do it, it's hard on them and their family. However, you probably won't see combat. For some, this can be a relief. For others, it's hard, it can be hard to hear. I promise you, if you do join and make the military career, you just might be happier you never did see combat. Number two. Lots of training. Get used to lots and lots and lots of training. There seems to be never enough training that someone can endure in the military. You will train the same mission sets, the same brief, the same weapon system, fixing the same system over and over and over again. While this seems miserable, there is a method to, to what seems like the madness. As the philosopher Achillicos once said, we do not rise to the level of our expectations, we fall to the level of our training. Meaning that it is through repeating the same task over and over and over again, we bring that conscious task into our unconscious ability. This creates proficiency and competency in our job and makes us skilled at whatever we do in our life. Number three, you will get paid more with less financial training. When I first joined the military, no matter where you come from, you instantly join the middle class. If you join from poverty, if you're a trust fund baby, or you may already be in the middle class, the financial benefits of joining the military are too numerous to count. This, however, means at a young age, you don't develop a good financial literacy. The military will give you very little guidance on your own finances. This will not properly educate you on how you should prepare yourself for your future financial goals. Now this is up to you to do. The great thing is there are many free resources in the military that will give you the financial literacy you need in order to win with the money that you make while you are in the military. Things such as when should I start investing in my retirement plan, also known as the TSP or thrift saving plan. What fund should I put my money into in the TSP? How should I budget my money? What type of budget is best for me? Like I said, before there are many great free resources out there and classes on base that will guide you in your financial journey to success. Number four, you will do things people dream about doing and people will hate doing them. I clearly remember when this happened to me. I saw the flight schedule the night before, I saw my name on a gun shoot, 
not just a gun shoot, a recurrency shoot for the what they call the Gao 21, seen here. I saw my name on it and said out loud, I don't want to fly out in the desert right now on night vision goggles, shoot this gun at a tank, fly back, debrief the event, then clean this gun for another hour plus. You might think I'm crazy, but at this point, thinking, bro, I would pay big money to do what you do. Well, I thought the same way too. When I first came in, I, you know, I had bright eyes, I was ready to take on the world. That all changed when you quick, quickly realized that the military you joined isn't what you thought it was. Shooting guns becomes a chore and cleaning them even more so. The key is to try to appreciate what you were doing while at the same time doing it well. It's easy to be pessimistic. It's hard to be objectively looking at what you were doing for what it is. And that's fun and awesome. Number five, same people just wearing a uniform. Now you're in the military and you figure out very quickly that people you thought would be that stalwart soldier, airman, sailor you thought they would be, they aren't. They're the same people you grew up with. They are even from all over the country and, and hold very different belief structures. Deep down, they seem like the crap you left. This doesn't happen to everyone, but again, is a pessimistic view of the situation. Understand some people change with time. Some will stay the same. The only difference between the civilian sector and the military is the experiences military members run into on a daily basis are very different and create many different opportunities for growth. However, some of your peers won't capitalize on them. On these opportunities, which brings me to number six, college is free. It's free. College is dang near free for your kids and for you. Each service has a form of tuition assistance, whether it's fully funded, meaning they pay for the entirety of your classes or not. It's branch specific. The Navy currently covers 100% of your tuition, up to $250 a credit hour, and most college lower tuition rates that match this, okay? So for by using tuition assistance in the military, you aren't touching your GI Bill, and now known as the post-9-11 GI Bill. The cool thing about this is that you can now, after six years, pass your GI Bill onto your spouse, and after 10 years, pass your GI Bill onto your kids. At the same time you're using TA, you can also apply for scholarships, Pell Grants, all these things to help you with the cost of college, such as paying for laptops, paying for printers. Here in my life, this is how it's applied. I'm about to graduate with my bachelor's in psychology. I paid zero dollars for my entire education using TA, Pell Grants, scholarships. Uh, the TA alone in the Navy has forked over $19,000. I still have my full GI Bill, which both of my daughters have access to when they graduate high school. And right now, they're only two and three years old. Number seven, your job won't be what you think it is when you joined. You watch the commercials talking about how badass you're going to be. Your recruiter told you all the cool places you're going to go see and experiences you're going to have. Then you find out that's not like that way. It's not like that at all. The reason being is because a lot of people join the military base off of highlight reels. Now, what do I mean by highlight reels? I mean the cool stuff you hear about or see only accounts for a fraction of maybe 1% of everything you do while you were in the service. Now, this is not unique to the military. This applies to almost any job you'll do in your adult life. You will experience amazing things, but you also have to deal with the bullshit too. Highs are sky high, lows are very low in the military. The key is being able to deal with the lows in your career effectively while appreciating highs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit me up and hit that like button, smash the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.